ESPN hit Stephen Curry with a low blow, ranking the Dubs point guard as the fifth best player in the NBA, behind Joel Embiid, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, and Giannis Adetokounmpo. It's easy to question who's putting together these rankings, and if they watched the same four rounds that we did, where Steph and the Warriors didn't even face elimination. Magic and Bird in the 80s, MJ in the 90s, Kobe and Shaq in the 2000s, plus LeBron and KD in the 2010s, are legends who receive widespread respect for their achievements. Conversely, Wardell Stephen Curry II has been robbed of finals MVP debatably twice with all due respect to Durant, and there's a paradox when it comes to how fans treat LeBron's losses versus how they treat Steph's. Despite Curry turning 35 in March, he seems to have plenty of his prime remaining, so Draymond Green saying the Warriors will win three of the next four championships doesn't seem too outlandish. What's the newest incredibly stupid talking point regarding Steph? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference, and make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Now into the content. It's absolutely insane that Stephen Curry didn't win finals MVP back in 2015, despite averaging a team most 26 points and 6.3 assists per game. Andre Iguodala's wing defense was paramount, but it's utter blasphemy that he was given the award over Steph. It's the mainstream media that hyped up Iggy's supposed lockdown clamps on LeBron James, which made the extremely strong case for Andre being the most valuable player in the series, and the wing taking home the award, of course, came to fruition. 2015 was a year in which Steph would win his first of two straight MVP trophies in the regular season, and to many it felt comical that the cherry on top to that season wouldn't come in the form of the Bill Russell Award. The little 6'2 guard out of Davidson was facing the same scrutiny that he dealt with when he was ranked the 256th best player in the nation coming out of high school. Because in the LeBron James era, sure, Steph had won his first ring, but not winning finals MVP gave juice to the haters narrative as they could say that Curry was carried to a title. Many don't apply that same logic when referring to the help LeBron's gotten from teammates throughout the years, as when King James loses, it's always on his supporting cast. Conversely, in the 2016 NBA Finals, where Stephen Curry was playing on a sprained knee, which he suffered in the first round against the Houston Rockets, compounded by ankle and elbow injuries once he returned from that knee sprain, the Warriors blowing a 3-1 series lead to the Cavaliers was blamed entirely on the chef. KD's number should be retired for the Warriors one day, and he deserved his finals MVP in 2017, without a doubt in my mind. However, his numbers compared to Curry in the 2018 finals are nearly identical, and Steph was always the player throughout the Durant years who was facing far more double teams. Steph's taken out so many Western Conference franchises that it's easy to see why many fan bases aren't fond of him. The newest narrative being spewed by the likes of a certain Houston Rockets fan states that Stephen Curry's never face legitimate adversity. This goes back to people thinking Steph had an easy path to every championship he won and saying that he had all the help in the world. Many falsely claim Curry had it easy against the Cavs in 2015 with Kyrie and Love injured, then they say Iguodala and Durant were more valuable when the Warriors got to the finals. Those are thinly veiled talking points when you factor in that unlike LeBron James, Curry's not only won one championship without a superstar next to him, but he's won two. Also, let's not forget the train wreck of an organization that Golden State was before Curry arrived in 2009. It's not like Curry entered the perfect situation, like players being drafted to the Warriors now are. In fact, that's the opposite of the case. His arrival in the Bay 13 years ago completely reversed the Warriors' culture and therefore their fortunes. LeBron gets the respect he deserves for making eight straight finals appearances, and in no way am I slighting James for the once-in-a-lifetime career he's had. All I'm saying is, it's time we start making it mainstream that Steph and Braun at least belong in the same sentence. Here's what Curry had to say on Media Day entering his 14th year. I feel like in my head I'm still getting better. Hopefully we can still win a couple more championships. End quote. It's absolute garbage that Curry's been met with mostly disrespect after winning his fourth ring and should have been second or third finals MVP. 
One dimensional takes from Mike James, ESPN's Dominique Foxworth still holding up zeros for the amount of titles Curry will win in the future, and the majority of mainstream media outlets focusing on anything else other than Golden State winning the chip is what Steph's had to endure this offseason. I've done my best to offer up just as much love as there is hate, but it gets overwhelming at times with all the LBJ diehards and stands of other top players who are constantly tearing down Steph for a variety of reasons. Thankfully, Giannis Adetokounmpo cleared the air during his recent press conference. So that's how I view it. Uh, I believe that uh, the best player in the world is uh, Steph Curry. It's still, still the next player. Great take from the Greek freak. Giannis is always a class act. But to clear the air about Steph supposedly not having any adversity, this man was drafted to a 29-win team. He suffered countless sprains and two ankle surgeries. He played through a sprained MCL in the 2016 playoffs, a broken left hand which cost him the 2019-20 season. Not to mention, Steph missed the final month of this year's regular season, so while he was taking care of teams in the playoffs, he was also in the process of finding a rhythm. Pretty incredible, considering how clean the Warriors' title run was for the most part. The Bash Bros, aka the Green Bros, in Draymond and newest warrior Jermichael Green will certainly have Curry's back at all times. Here's what Jermichael had to say about the type of enforcer that he and Draymond are. And you kind of emphasize bringing that dog mentality when you first came here, doing all the little things. What do you think that's going to be like with Draymond on the, on the court as well? Oh, it's going to be fun. You're going to get on a lot of people's skin. It's going to be a lot of trash talking. It's going to be some bumping. I mean, uh, it's what I live for. I mean, I love it. Curry's not the only warrior being disrespected, as Jordan Poole being ranked the 55th best player, Draymond being ranked the 43rd best player, Clay being ranked 37th, and Wiggins being 32nd should give those players plenty of motivation. But it's weird that ESPN thinks Curry won the title without a top 30 player, yet still doesn't rank him number one, or even top three for that matter, given the attention Steph should be getting to the Brooklyn Nets and LA Lakers drama. All of the downplaying of Curry's legacy goes beyond being disrespectful, but it's straight savage type behavior from casuals. That's why it's ever so imminent that informed Hoops fans give one of, if not the most mind-boggling, historically great talent to ever grace the court, an inappropriate amount of respect to counter all the blasphemy being spewed. I'll continue to spread the truth about the accomplishments and all-time status of Stephen Curry on this channel, He's the best player in the league at the moment, more than deserve it of being called that, the most revolutionary talent to grace the court of all time, and in my opinion, a top 3-5 to five player of all time. As Steph's legend is completed in his late 30s, look for him to chase down MJ and LeBron's current reputation among many as being the greatest of all time. Two shoutouts next video, but which narrative specifically will Curry be trying to reverse in 22-23? For some reason, I never thanked y'all for 80k subscribers, so thanks the world for that. Thanks for watching.